What is going on YouTube? Welcome to TJ Mitchell Films, your one-stop shop for everything Jeep and off-road related content. And today I'm going to be giving you guys a tour of the fabrication shop in which I do most of my projects these days. And I get a lot of questions about it. So I figured why not give you guys a proper tour so you guys can see the whole space and some of the behind the scenes of what really goes on here. So to start off, uh, seems like most of my videos these days uh, are pretty much filmed mostly right here, right by the bay door. I just pull the Jeep in right here and we get to work. Uh, there's a lot going on in this shop, so we don't have too much vehicle space. We're sort of limited to this general area. Um, well, obviously, we'll just start right here. Up here, we got pretty decent sized um, steel rack. Uh, here, we do about 90% stainless steel uh, for the wine industry uh, Monday through Friday. It's my uh, 9 to 5. And um, so, yeah, we got a lot of stainless up on the rack, but uh, lately we've been doing some more. We got some mild steel on the bottom. You can see up top, uh, we got an auger for a project that's stainless steel. So, a lot of material always in stock, which just makes it nice when we get an emergency project. Uh, over here, there's three guys that work in the shop, including myself, uh, three welders. This is the first little workstation area. As you can see, he was uh, ticking up some, uh, these are going to be pump carts. Uh, and nothing too crazy going on over here. Uh, we do have a Miller Dynasty 210 uh, TIG welder. That's sort of the uh, workhorse. Uh, over here and we got a little cylinder rack back here we go through tons of gas and then moving on over here uh, as you pull the we pull the material off we come usually straight to the bandsaw and we got rollers and this bandsaw is old it is a do-all and it is I don't even know how old but this thing is an absolute beast we cut so much material on this thing it has just been nothing but reliable for us. Also over here, we got a little grinding uh, station set up. We got our belt and disc sander here. Uh, we try and keep this for mild seal and stainless seal only, so we're not uh, cross-contaminating there. We also got uh, one of the two air compressors over here. This is a Ingersoll Rand. We got a little buff wheel for deburring sharp edges on the stainless steel, and this guy is mainly used for sharpening tungsten here. This drill press doesn't get used too often, as you'll see why. We have something much better for drilling holes. So as we come over this way, this is sort of more of the main fabrication area. We got two setups here. Um, I work on this side, and this is the other side. And they're pretty much mirrored images of each other. We got aluminum uh, tops here on this pallet shelving to kind of just get a nice workbench area so we can weld anywhere on here. Um, on my side, I'm rocking a Miller Dynasty 280, and that thing is a beast. When we get some big aluminum projects, that's what we end up using because we can go up to 280 amps. Over here is the same as the other side. It's a Dynasty 210, but this one's water-cooled, just like the 280. Uh, so that torch isn't getting hot, which is really nice. Over here, we got a little uh, cordless DeWalt section. Uh, we got fluid sprays, drill bits, some miscellaneous hardware, uh, full stainless uh, hardware bin here, and it sort of gets a little congested over here. We got some kind of miscellaneous knickknacks, blades, hose clamps, tape. Uh, also, uh, we just got this not too long ago. This is a Hypertherm, uh, I don't remember which model, plasma cutter, cuts like butter. We don't use that too much, but when we do, it comes through in a pinch. Now, this is one of my favorite things in the whole shop. This jig table, we try and build everything we can off of this jig table. We got a bunch of little, uh, as you can see, these, these clamps here, but we got a bunch of attachments. So when we're building stuff, it keeps it nice and straight. If you watch my rock slider video or my bumper video, you saw me welding on the jig table. Also, what's really cool, check this out. The grounds for both of the welders, they're hooked up into this whole structure and we have this arm that swings out. So we can slide our ground out and lower this down right onto the jig table. So it's one less um, 
cord that you have to trip on. So you can walk right under here and you're grounded to your workpiece, which is super awesome. Also, both of these welders over here are rocking wireless foot pedals now. Uh, we had one wireless before, two now. Super nice. You get rid of all those cords. I can't wait. And you know, if they come out with a, with a wireless torch cable or something, you let me know. <laughs> just kidding. You guys know that's not possible, right? Okay. We'll just keep moving our way back. That's sort of the workbench station over here. This is why we don't use that little drill press over there. Uh, this is an old, once again, uh, I don't know how old this is, but this Enco mill, um, I mean, I have drilled hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of holes with this thing. Um, you've seen it in a lot of my videos, uh, coping tube, drilling holes for brackets. Um, this thing is an absolute workhorse. And then if we jump over here, we have a lathe. We don't do too much machining here. Uh, on the lathe, but comes in handy every once in a while. Um, pretty fun to use, actually. This was one, uh, one of my favorite tools to learn to use when I started working here. Also, underrated, but every shop needs a really thick, heavy welding table. Because um, sometimes, depending on what we have going on, the jig table's taken up, and if you need to do a bunch of welding or hammering on stuff, this is the table. Uh, that that happens on. Next up, we have this guy. Now this is a, a Piranha Iron Worker, and this guy is another absolute workhorse. I should actually grab. Uh, this guy is great if you just need to nip something off. We can just cut right through. I mean, it cuts it like. It cuts it like it's not even there. I believe the max capacity on here, we can, this thing can just cut one inch solid square. Um, so this thing has saved me so many uh, hours on projects. Just cutting little things, it really helps speed things up. Um, back here we sort of have our little makeshift aluminum cutting. Uh, you might have seen me use this. A lot of people don't know you can cut aluminum with just a, uh, a normal saw blade there. It actually works really well. Cut a, I think my bed rack and stuff, you, pro you guys probably saw me use this. And now this guy is, this is a 10 foot um, shear. And this guy saves a lot of work. It can shear up to 10 gauge steel. And it is, Another one, an old workhorse, and it just keeps chugging along. Um, definitely been in another couple videos. You've probably seen this in action, which leads me up to the other Wysong equipment that we have in here. Now this is the press brake, and we got a bunch of dies for this thing, and this thing is a beast. You have to see it run. So we're gonna fire this up. It's kinda, Got some intric intricacies, I would say. Um, it's sort of been rigged up, as you can see. But we're going to fire this thing up, and this is spooling up, and this clutch, this clutch right here is going to start spinning. And once that's up to speed, we have uh, custom adjusted these, these buttons um, to give us our height adjustment for different brakes. And we can adjust the speed on how fast that uh, does with this, with these frequency drives. There's two drives on this thing, so it's sort of a custom uh, one-off. All right. So now that this thing is cooking here, we got our foot pedal, and we're not going to bend anything right now. But it's just kind of cool to see work. I mean, and just like everything else in the shop, I have bent thousands of parts, brackets on this break. It's a little temperamental, but you learn to live with it, and it's as reliable as can be. All right, let's come this way. So in this dimly lit corner of the shop, we have a four foot slip roll, and this is for uh, rolling sheet metal. Um, I don't think I've used this in one of my projects. Um, 
Although, if you think back to my Samurai when I stretched uh, and did the rear body panels, to get those rounded um, corners, I rolled them on this thing. So uh, we don't, don't use this one too much, but it is really nice to have. Also, super old school Erico MIG welder. We don't really need that anymore because we have some upgraded machines in the shop now, but it's here in case we need it because it's reliable. All right, and as you come this way, uh, you'll start to see some of the other projects that we've done or are doing, I should say. Um, these are gonna be uh, rollover punch downs for uh, like pressing uh, grapes for the wine industry. All right, now some of the cool stuff. Now this is our old tubing bender and this is in a hydraulic unit and we have a bunch of different dies for it, but it's not programmable. So what we ended up getting uh, a little while back is this RBD 250 from Bailey and this is a programmable um, machine and it's got a touch screen and so you've seen me bending tube on that it makes it super easy you never have to uh, remember any of the settings you just put in once you get it set your material and how much you want it to bend and it just does it also we have two different Millermatic 252 uh, wire feed MIG welders that we use uh, we keep one set up for mild one set up for stainless we also have um, spool guns for both of them if we want to do aluminum if we're doing a big catwalk job or something like that and so that's why we don't use the Airco because these uh, Millers have been super reliable. As you can tell, we're sort of team Miller here. Uh, haven't really had any problems with any of our welders. Obviously we got a bunch of storage up top for miscellaneous projects, repairs. We, we get stuck with a lot of different things. Um, also, I forgot to mention that the other main air compressor in the shop is actually way up in the corner, if you guys can see that up there. Um, right out of the way, um, that Husky. And that thing is a workhorse as well. And that thing's always cranking. But up in the corner, it doesn't make too much noise. Just something to point out that you guys might have seen, but not maybe you didn't see, I don't know how, is uh, the Christmas tree. I don't know, it's sort of a trademark of the shop. Uh, had a lot of comments on it, but if you haven't noticed that, you'll see it in the background of a lot of my videos hanging up there. We're not gonna bore you guys with the storage that's upstairs. Uh, it's just storage for parts. Um, it goes it goes across up there, the whole thing. So nothing too exciting over there. And yeah, I think that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. But make sure you go down there. If you're still watching this video and you're not already subscribed, you must be liking my videos. So go down there, hit the subscribe button. After that, you have to hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on when I post my latest videos. And then after that, you got to make sure you like the video. Thank you so much. See you guys.